Hello, and welcome back to another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. In our world of instant gratification and access to everything, one of the great joys is being able to sit at your laptop and after just two or three intense arguments, find a film to watch with your friends or partner that wasn't really what either of you wanted. With so much money behind movies, it's sometimes hard to believe that someone, somewhere, signed off on some truly terrible pieces of cinema. And worst of all is an awful ending. At least if the beginning is bad, you can cut your losses. But a bad ending is the ultimate reason for rage. So whether it's massive plot holes, terrible timing, or just an idea so ridiculous you wouldn't just have to suspend belief, you'd have to hang it, burn it, and then bury it deep in the ocean. Today, we look at the top 10 worst movie endings. Number 10. The Village M. Night Shyamalan made his name with, well, firstly with too many letter A's, but also with The Sixth Sense, a movie that is all about the ending and a truly brilliant twist. The problem was, he then decided that this was his trademark, and went about making increasingly awful movies with this in mind. Signs with Mel Gibson was slightly ruined by its ending, but it's the village that really takes the brown medal for plot twists. Despite having five Oscar-nominated actors and actresses, including two actual winners in Adrian Brody and William Hurt, having this old world village turn out to be just a big nature reserve in the modern world was a real letdown. To make things worse, Shyamalan himself played the forest ranger who kept the outside world at bay, which presumably was meant to be clever, but most people probably didn't even notice while they choked in rage on their popcorn. I'm back, Lucius. Number 9. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull The Spielberg and George Lucas team-up for the original Indiana Jones movies was perfect chemistry, and mixed action, adventure, humor, and great cinematography in with Harrison Ford's natural charm. There was no reason to believe that the magic couldn't be found again when they made Kingdom of the Crystal Skull many years later. But where the mysteries in the first movie were often tied to religious objects like the Holy Grail and the Sankara Stones, having galaxy-traveling aliens with heads like glass paperweights who got stuck in the jungle was a bit too much to swallow. You didn't need to see through the audience skulls to know how they felt about it all. Number 8. Matrix Revolutions The first Matrix movie was hugely influential. Not only did it bring a whole new style to action fight scenes that can still be seen today, but it's even used as a discussion point in many introductory philosophy courses. So the Wachowski brothers were given a huge budget to make two follow-ups. The problem was, the concept went from textbook philosophy to serial packet stupid. And by the time all the fighting was over and someone had swept up a billion Agent Smiths, no one was really paying attention to the Architect and the Oracle, as they mumbled something about Neo and others and viruses. We won't make it. We gotta blow the EMP now. Come on, someone. Number 7. AI Haley Joel Osment put in a great performance as an outcast robot child in a dystopian future world. In fact, the whole film rolled pretty sweetly with solid acting, an interesting premise, and some wonderful special effects. 
And when the robot boy was stuck underwater, staring peacefully at a statue representing his lost mother, it seemed like a decent movie had been wrapped up in a sad but meaningful way. But before you could rub the crumbs off your lap and start looking for the exit, the film abruptly continued with aliens waking the boy up thousands of years in the future and reincarnating his dead mom. That's what happens when you let computers write movies, Mr. Spielberg. About detailing what motivates me to tell a story as if it's some tremendous thought process that takes years to figure out first emotionally and internally and then to be able to turn around and tell you the story that I worked so hard to figure out whether I wanted to tell it at all. And I, I realize that it's all, all the decisions I make about the stories I tell are intuitive decisions. I either sparked her story or I don't. And, and in this case, when Stanley first told me about AI and let me read the treatment in 1984, I immediately said to Stanley, this is the best story you've ever had to tell. And I felt that in 1984. Number six, The Adjustment Bureau. Legendary science fiction writer Philip K. Dick has been behind many classics, such as Blade Runner, Minority Report, and Total Recall. So his typical theme of the world having a completely different reality to what you thought could have worked well with the adaption of his short story, Adjustment Team. The movie has Matt Damon's politician realize the world and all our choices are controlled by mysterious people in hats. Do they really explain this? No. Do they give it a half-hearted religious tone at the end, which is vague and unsatisfying? Yes, they went with that. Adjustment needed. While people like you come along who knock down all the obstacles we put in your way. People who realize free will is a gift you'll never know how to use until you fight for it. Number five, War of the Worlds. Long before Philip K. Dick, there was the godfather of science fiction, the master H.G. Wells. And his story, War of the Worlds, actually caused panic when it was broadcast as a radio show and some listeners tuned in and believed there was a real alien attack. Nothing happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is terrific. This end of the thing is beginning to flake off. The top is beginning to rotate like a screw and the thing must be hollow. He's moving! The only disturbance with the 2005 Tom Cruise film was people wondering if they could have their two hours back. Because if aliens can plan a massive planetary invasion, it's pretty stupid to think that they could basically all suddenly die of the it's flu. Them. They come down in capsules, riding the lightning into the ground, into the machines, right? You hear that? We're getting the hell out of here. Get in, get in, get in, get in! Hey, were you on that plane? That's too bad. It would have been a really great story. Number four. Prometheus. There was a lot to like about Prometheus, since it had an excellent cast and some outstanding special effects. There was also a lot to dislike, such as the plot and almost every dumb choice the scientists made. Earth's brightest and best decide to wander an alien planet, helmets off, and just stick a curious finger in whatever goo they come across. And they finally meet their maker, our maker, the engineer. He goes straight into Donkey Kong mode and tries to beat everyone to death without even a hello. And everyone seems delighted about their eventual suicide mission. And Vickers is crushed by a spaceship because she doesn't know how to run sideways. And, well, that's enough for now. Number 3, Lord of the Rings Return of the King. The Lord of the Rings trilogy served up some of cinema's greatest ever battle scenes, as well as beautiful fantasy storytelling and a wonderful cast of characters. The films were long, but even so, many parts of Tolkien's original novels had to be cut. 
But after the dust had settled from the war and many loose ends had been tied up, the final movie has a seemingly never-ending series of goodbye scenes. So you had to hold your bladder for an extra hour while Gandalf swapped Twitter details with everyone and they all had to hunt round the living room three times to find Frodo's keys. Number 2. Jurassic Park 3 Jurassic Park and the sequel were thrill rides, making the most of Spielberg's direction, Jeff Goldblum's charm, and Michael Crichton's fantastic novels. So Jurassic Park 3 decided it could do without all of those and just chop together whatever bits of the books and cast they found lying around. But still, even within this car crash, the ending somehow manages to stick out as incredibly irritating. They are surrounded by velociraptors trapped, ready to die, then someone decides to blow down a velociraptor's skull and BAM! Problem over, dinosaurs chillax. You may have well just made it a magic pipe. That's how little sense it makes. <laughs> Number 1. Lucy Luke Besson's most famous work of science fiction, Fifth Element, is a cult classic. However, with Lucy, he dropped the ball and then punctured it and then accidentally insulted the ball's wife. It's based on the false premise that we only use 10% of our brains. So as Scarlett Johansson's character slowly gets control of her brain, as we're trying not to beat ours out on the wall, she eventually turns a bit godlike and touches a monkey's finger, possibly starting mankind's evolution. Hey monkey, pull my finger. Hey, where is she? Thanks for watching another Daily Top 10's Top 10 video. And remember, it's our duty to entertain and yours to subscribe. Please subscribe to Daily Top 10's.